Well, our first question today comes from Daniel, mm -hmm. and he says, how do I actually process my emotions? The past couple of months have been somewhat tragic. A lot of things have happened. Loss of a friend, made a few bad choices that I now think back and go, wow, that was stupid. <laughs> but I still have a lot of grief and guilt. And I'm a bit unsure by what you mean when you say processing emotions. Mm. Well, firstly, the whole terminology processing emotions um, is probably, it's better to say, how do I feel my emotions? Because yep. once you feel and experience your emotions, you are processing through your emotions. So when we talk about processing emotions, we're really saying that it's processing through emotions. In other words, going through the process of feeling lots and lots of different emotions. Mm -hmm. To actually process an emotion, mm -hmm. you need to feel it, you need to experience it, you need to let yourself experience it and feel it. So that's quite simple uh, in terms of an answer. Now obviously Daniel's question has got a lot more complexity in it than that, but, but if we look at the issue of, of feeling or experiencing your emotions, the main problem we have is, in, in Daniel's case, it's the same problem that he has, and that is we're, we're often not very sensitive to our emotions. Yeah. And we're also not very sensitive to allowing them to flow, to allowing them to be present, to allowing ourselves to experience them. So whenever traumatic events occur, so he's lost a friend, he said, I think, and yep. made some bad decisions that he feels regretful and guilty <laughs> about yep. as well. These kind of, <coughs> the fact that these things have happened, I just need to have a cough. The fact that these things have happened are, they, they are law of attraction events. So, so in other words, his soul is in a certain condition and then it's attracting events that would cause him under normal circumstances if he was sensitive yeah. to feel specific emotions that are within his soul. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the events are being attracted is an indication that these particular emotions must exist in his soul, otherwise he wouldn't attract the events. Right. So, so we need to examine then why it is that he's not being able to feel the events. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever we can't feel, there's only a few reasons why we can't. One is that we're in complete denial of our feelings. In other words, we spend most of our time trying to shut down our feelings. Two is that we revert to anger-based positions. Or three, that we have a lot of addictions in play. So if someone's not feeling their emotions, uh, through, particularly through traumatic events, mm -hmm. the key is to look at the different belief systems that create addictions uh, that are in play, or to look at the particular belief systems, emotional belief systems that create denial of emotion. And this requires, again, a use of our will. Mm -hmm. So we've emphasized over and over during these sessions that our will must be engaged. So what I'm suggesting to Daniel is that his will is not engaged to, to feel emotion at this point. Yeah. His will instead is engaged to deny emotions, to suppress emotions, to resist emotions or substitute emotions. Mm -hmm. So that's how he's currently using his will. Now, we only use our will along those lines because of belief systems that we have inside of us. Belief systems such as, it's pointless feeling my emotion. It's better if I avoid my emotion. Uh, if I feel my emotions, I'll get punished, and so forth. Yeah. We need to examine the belief systems inside of ourselves. And again, this is an exercise of our will. Mm -hmm. So what is our emotional feelings that we have about feeling emotions? Yeah. So, so what do we really feel about having to experience our own emotions? Yeah. Now, this is where we start to see the fears involved that that begin to be exposed once we start this examination process. So, so someone like Daniel probably thinks that he has very little fear, mm -hmm. but the reality is there must be a lot of fear about emotion. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he would already be feeling his emotion, particularly if he lost a good friend uh, through mm -hmm. death or whatever, there'd probably some emotions come up there. And the fact that he's shut down towards them means that he's probably not feeling them. Yeah. And that means that he must have fears and he's probably suppressing his fears with some addictions. Yeah. And, and this helps him avoid. And the only way you can get through all of that is to, is to use your will to change what you do. Yeah. So that's the only thing I've been able to do. Your, if your will is actively engaged in trying to suppress emotion, there is very little emotion that you'll actually ever find. You need to change your will 
And that's about changing some of your belief systems. And it's also about desire. If, if we have little desire to connect to God or little desire to become our true self, then of course we will actively resist most of our emotions. And so it, again, it gets down to the development of a real pure, wholehearted, sincere desire to connect to God and connect to ourselves and a real pure, wholehearted, sincere desire to feel and express what we really feel at all times. Mm -hmm. And most people don't have those two desires. And so that's something that we would need to learn how to develop. Now, one of the main reasons why we don't have those desires is because our fear prevents us from having desires. Mm -hmm. So again, it's only fear that usually prevents us from developing desires that are good for us. And it's also fear, uh, fear indicates generally that there are many false beliefs. So I, if I was Daniel, I would also examine my false beliefs about God, false beliefs about emotions, false beliefs about fear mm -hmm. and so forth that I have. Because with, it, when you get into a state of truth with regard to your past, you know, your life up to this point, and your truth about the decisions that you've made that you regret, mm -hmm. then you will easily connect to the emotions that those particular truths bring up. Mm -hmm. When we deny the truth, we will resist our emotions mm -hmm. quite strongly. And so he's obviously doing that as well, particularly with regard to the issues revolving around the things that he feels bad about, that he, cho that he made some bad decisions in the yeah. past few months. So they are the main things that he would need to do. Now, what I find is that most people, when they're told that, they want to be told how to do that. But the reality is when you have desire to do it, you work out how to do it. You actually engage a process where you are sincere about finding out the truth about yourself. And once that happens, then the truth about yourself comes at you quite rapidly mm -hmm. through all sorts of events. You attract it through the, the law of attraction so your soul, as soon as you enter the state where you really want to know the truth, you have a lot of events happening around you that tell you the truth quite rapidly. And so that's one way of finding out the truth if you really wanted to know it. Yeah. The other thing is that you'd be open to the feedback from others. And I find a lot of people say, oh, you know, I want to get into my emotions, but then you tell them one thing about their emotions and they're in complete denial about that particular emotion, which means that they're not open to any feedback. They're not being humble to... Mm -hmm any feedback from the universe around them or from other people which might help them. Yeah. If you're truly sincere about dealing with your emotions, you do not care where the information comes from. You allow the information to come to you and then you w attempt to go through it emotionally. So, so when it comes to processing these emotions, yeah. all we need do is experience them. The problem is getting to the point of experiencing them for most yeah. people. So, um, just a little bit of theory then. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we talked about this a bit in how the human soul functions, mm -hmm. but, but in this, you know, talking about feeling our emotions fully or processing emotion, um, what does it mean? Say I'm Daniel mm -hmm. and my friend passes and I go to the funeral and I have a bit of a cry. Um, well, I suggest that Daniel probably didn't even do that, but, <laughs> but go, go on. <laughs> I suppose what I'm asking about is where, uh, where we find the difference between uh, what it means to be a bit emotional and what it means to actually process an emotion and how we know we've processed an emotion. Or what, what, what are we referring to when we talk about those kinds of things? The problem with answering these kind of questions that you've just asked, I feel, is that it intellectualises a process that is emotional. Yeah. And the big problem that most people have is that they're using their head too much <laughs> and just not allowing themselves to feel what they actually feel. Yeah. The reality is if you went along to a funeral of your friend and you had a connection with your friend and you had some false beliefs about death and so forth in you, which almost all of humanity does have, you would get into sadness at the funeral. Now, most people don't because they they're str struggling to hold back the sadness. Mm -hmm. so, so I feel the struggle to hold back the sadness is not going to be helped now by an intellectual discussion about you know, emotion and how sure. it works and everything. The, the, there needs to be a willingness developed in the soul, which is an emotional willingness developed in the soul through the exercise of your own will, 
to feel your own emotions. And if you can't feel your own emotions, it is because of all the emotional feelings that are in your soul that are unwilling mm -hmm. to feel emotion. Mm -hmm. And what I would do is sincerely look at my unwillingness. So rather than trying to force myself into be willing, yes. I would look at why I'm unwilling yeah. to feel my emotions. Yeah. And the question uh, that I'd ask Daniel is things like, um, how bad does your life have to get before you're going to feel an emotion? Mm. Right? That's a very uh, good question to ask yourself. Because for most people, it has to get very, very bad before they'll feel an emotion. Yeah. And remember, what we're trying to do is increase our emotional sensitivity, not increase our desensitivity. Mm. But the majority of people through their life increase their desensitivity to emotion. So, so, and the only thing that breaks through that is that is the law of attraction bringing more and more difficult events. Now, how hard do the events have to be before you're going to feel them? So, so if it's the death of a friend, it, what's the next death that's going to have to happen before you feel something? Maybe it's the death of a spouse or a child or something in your family before you'll start feeling some of that kind of grief. Wouldn't it be better to just begin to look at the blockages you have to feeling that grief mm. rather than just saying, oh, well, I can't feel, let's move on to the next nasty event that happens and <laughs> see how, how I go feeling that one. Yeah. Um, if we have a really sincere desire to feel, what I've found myself is that you can easily access your emotion, um, but you must exercise your will in that direction mm -hmm. first. And the majority of people, if they look at what they do during the course of the day, they don't exercise their will to feel emotion at all, generally. The course of the day, normally most people are engaging in activity which suppresses their emotion, engaging in activity that feeds their addictions so that their emotions can be suppressed, or trying to keep busy, which is another activity mm -hmm. to suppress emotion and it's another addiction. They have very little focus in their day-to-day -day activity of actually spending time each day to discover how they actually feel about the things that are happening in the course of the day and feel about the things that are happening that have happened in the past. And very, very few people have a sincere desire to actually do that. And that's the reason why the majority of people are really struggling when it comes to divine truth. Because unless you do that, you don't really have a sincere desire to connect to God. Mm -hmm. You don't really have a sincere desire to connect to yourself. And so it's highly uh, unlikely that you'll actually experience any improvement on a path that requires all of those things from you. Yeah. Now, remember, this is the way God created it to be. So in other words, you're never going to experience any improvement on the way God created it to be unless you're willing to go through this process. And your willingness will depend very much on your desire to look at your unwillingness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In other words, you've got to find all the reasons emotionally inside of you as to why you're so unwilling to feel what you're actually feeling mm. and what's actually present and what you're attracting. Yeah. And so that's where I would start if I was Daniel, to yeah. look at all of the ways that he doesn't like the idea, <laughs> not that he likes the idea, because it's very plain he does not like the idea from a soul level, otherwise he will already be feeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And even in his statements there, he's judging himself, isn't he? He's, he's calling himself stupid. and. Well, or no, he's no, he's not actually judging himself. I feel, from an emotional perspective, he he's calling himself stupid, but he's not really calling himself stupid. If you reread the question, yep. he's really saying that he did some stupid things. Yes, no, you're right. Which is he not is saying that same. he feels stupid himself, yep. and in fact, he's not allowing himself to feel stupid. That's the reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, in fact, he's distancing himself from the stupid choices that he has made, in his own definition. Mm -hmm. um, through that mechanism mm -hmm. he, he by saying by saying oh, i did some stupid things that's very different to saying i am a stupid person yes. so yeah i don't feel he believes he's a stupid person right he just feels that he made some silly mistakes in the last few months but he hasn't let himself feel about them and why he did them mm -hmm. which is all about the willingness again to find out why you're so unwilling <laughs> to live in harmony with love and truth yeah and this is why I feel most people f don't, you know, struggle on the divine love path, particularly when they first begin, because they, they are very, very unwilling. <laughs> and we need to get through our own unwillingness. Mm. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah.